Hey everybody, welcome to another exciting episode of Peter First Logger's Teach the Internet Reviews for Dishes Who Like Internet Reviews. Now you may be asking yourselves, Peter, why aren't you wearing your pink shirt? Well, because... It's a long story, I'll get into it another time. Anyways, today the game we're going to be reviewing is Tailspin for the Sega Genesis. Oh, the show is great. I mean, I mean, you had pipe, uh, Sky Pirates, like Don Carnage, Shiner Carnage, and then there was that Warthog. I don't remember his name, but he was a dick. Shere Khan was like, it was a bad guy. It was a pretty cool show. I had it on VHS, and I used to rewind that part whenever Don Carnage is flying after Boggle and they're just going through the air and then he hits the wall and it's like... I really like that show a lot, so so without further ado, let's just go right into it. I'm sorry for what I did. Tailspin is an action platformer where you play as Beluga and his little orphan friend Kit as they journey across the world to collect cargo crates. Oh, that's f***ing stupid. Now hold on, before we even get into the gameplay, let's take a look at the story. So it all starts when Becky... What the f***? Uh. Is that supposed to be Becky? Oh, hey Blogger, did you read the f***ing newspaper today? Oh, oh no, I forgot because uh, I'm a f***ing bear. Alright, basically Becker, Baloney, and Cat are all sitting around reading a newspaper when they discover that there's a flying contest. The contest involves collecting 10 cargo crates, each from different places around the f***ing world. And the prize, you ask? $10 million? No, silly. The prize is a lifetime work contract for the city. These f***ing goobers are awfully excited about risking their lives flying around the world to collect crates for a prize that literally seals a lifetime contract involving flying around the world collecting f***ing crates! Hold on, it gets better. Shere Khan's all like, Oh, another city contract. Interesting. That's right, Shere Khan from Shere Khan Industries is interested in competing for the prize of working for the city. He owns a f***ing industry! Why would he even risk his industry's time and resources to compete in such a stupid f***ing contest? <coughs> Shere Khan, pull your f***ing head out of your ass, dude. It's a bad business move. So then the city official, who's a f***ing jackass, is all like, The two finals for the contract are hire for hire in Shere Khan Industries. The table is tilted. The game is rigged! So then, I'm not making this up. Shere Khan gets to go first, and in order to win, you have to beat his best time by completing the contest in less than seven days. Oh, watch out for Don Carnage, who also has nothing to gain from this f***ing contract bullshit. But it doesn't matter, because Don Carnage just wants to hurt Boggle's feelings. And that's why I love Don Carnage. He's my favorite character of the show. So now it's time to select a character. Hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna go with Kit, because Blue, he looks a little out of shape. Alright, so now we start the game. Ah! Oh, well, alright. The enemies are suicidal. That's always a good sign. Speaking of enemies, we got annoying f***ing snakes, annoying f***ing crabs, annoying f***ing seagulls, annoying f***ing rats, nail barfing gargoyles, karate tigers, for alligator, green vultures who shoot rockets that travel slower than Blue can run. If it's slower than Baloo, it's not a f***ing rocket. Okay, so you got two types of levels. You got platforming levels and side-scrolling shooter levels, which are actually pretty fun. You also get power-ups, like a clock that turns back your time limit. Ice cream time freezes. Oh, I get it. And a 55 mile per hour sign that makes Beluga run like he's not a fat sack of shit. So you start with normal platforming level, running around, collecting crates. Who taught these bears how to f***ing swim? They tuck their arms in and, like, kick push their way around? This, this is the most retarded thing I've ever seen. Oh. So, hit detection on the enemies. Like, I think what they're going for is, like, you have to attack enemies at certain times to kill them, but it's so f***ing off. It's like they just get hit whenever the f***ing game decides to allow it. Some enemies, you have to wait for them to, like, attack you before you can even damage them. What? If you don't, your balls just bounce off their face. 
This guy can take a lot of balls to the face. <laughs> so the first level is pretty standard jungle stage. It's not too bad except for these fucking crabs. Get the fuck off! Oh, you fuck! So once you collect at least 10 crates, you have to find the exit and leave. Once you defeat the uninspired jackass of a boss, you have to play through a second stage. With, with the exact same music as the first. Awesome. And when you beat that stage, you play through a flying stage. Now the first time I did this, I was playing as Cat. Playing through a flying stage with Cat is impossible, and it's not his fault. It's fucking Ballsack's bullshit flying skills. He just randomly jerks the Sea Duck around, avoiding any and all power-ups, which are absolutely necessary to beat the stage. Oh sweet, just keep going straight so we can get the power-up. What the f*** are you doing, Dick Weasel? If you want to play through these stages as Cat, you'll need a second player to control Beefcake. So if you have no friends like me and you're playing single player, you have no choices other than to play as... Oh yeah, and when you die, your character slams against the screen and leaves a giant snot streak. Well, well, all right. So once you beat the shooter level, because you can actually collect the f***ing power-ups, you can pass on to the next level. Oh, watch out for the f***ing seagulls. Can we just take a second to appreciate Blue's walk cycle? A moment of silence, please, for this bear's dignity. You did it to yourself, Blue. Alright, this f***ing level plays at a snail's pace. You spend so much damn time waiting for the f***ing wall rabbits to finish puking or whatever else is puking or pissing or spilling out water. Why the f*** uh. does water hurt your characters? Oh god, my blood pressure. Look at the respawn time for these snakes. I mean, holy sh**. The second they're off the screen, they respawn. Okay, we beat it. Oh, another f another flying stage. Alright, before we continue, there's two things to discuss. The flying stages and the boss fights. The flying stages seem to be the same all the time. Shoot the planes, you win. I don't know if they get different later on, but the first, like, four are the same. So these are the bosses. Magnet Man, with the power to get his ass kicked really easy. Ball shooting green weasel wolf with the power to shoot balls at you and also get his ass kicked really easily. Mine shooting uh, green weasel with the power to shoot mines onto the ceiling the f and fan man with the power to f and seriously all of these boss fights are painfully long i mean even when you get the pattern down it still takes for fucking ever to kill him so moving on to the next stage whoa well, okay i guess we'll start you out with a alligator bitch slap this is my favorite stage i call it the labyrinth of wasting 30 minutes of my f***ing life so once you beat this stage, it's on to- HOLY uh. Oh, whoa! Hold on! Where do I go? I'll give you up! Alright, so we got terrible hit detection, annoying enemies, uninspired and recycled boss fights, shit to collect each stage, and an all-encompassing time limit. This game was no fun. I give it two retarded bears out of five. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more old school video game reviews. But don't you dare hit that button if you're crafter. And leave a comment in the comment section below about how much you f***ing hate me and wish I was dead or whatever you do. Fucking whatever. Uh. Fucking end!